We are on December 19th. Totally unbelievable. And we're going to try our best to make some page tabs using stamps. Welcome to Defemerember, your daily inspiration for making junk journal ephemera in December. This is a collaboration, as you know, with amazing Luisa Heinzel, and this is Barbara from Vienna, Austria. Mr. Haribo has a big window for us today, so let's have a look. Ooh, I love these. We get a whole roll of these gummies. Yum. <laughs> so page tabs are a fun addition to any kind of journal. This is one of my altered books that I have used as a planner. And here I have fabric page tabs. These are like super easy to make. You just cut out a rectangle and glue it onto your page. Super fun, super easy. Here in the front, I made one of paper because that was my book page and I wanted to have this book. And this is a stamp, actually, this could work totally for today. It's a stamp and it's a page tab. I didn't even realize that. This is another one of my previous altered book planners. And in this one, I have these with the month. They are floral and they have the month on them. You can find these in my shop. I will link them below in case you want to check them out. So I also have the version where you just have the blank white space without any words. So you can just hand write or stamp whatever you want. So that's another version. Then I also have this version which is also in my shop and maybe you have a coupon code for these. Don't know. I will link these for you below as well. Or maybe you have a cool tap punch like this, which you can also find linked below. I love using this punch, but this is not what this prompt is about. We are obviously going to make our own and I'm really looking forward to this because this is again something I would have never done if it wasn't for this prompt. And I'm really looking forward to playing with some scraps and making some awesome page tabs. <laughs> so I just grabbed a handful of scraps of my coffee dyed paper. I'm always super happy when I can use up some of those scraps. And I also just found this one on my desk. How cool is this? So this has just some of the leftover paints that I've been playing with the last few days where I always put whatever was left on my brush on this paper, even splattered some. How amazing is this? So I'm definitely going to use some of this as well, either as a background scrap or to stamp something on. We shall see. And then of course we need some stamps. So I have been through my collection of stamps and I have chosen all of these wooden stamps to go with my urban nature theme. So these are all nature themed and I just love the wooden stamps. There's something about using the wooden stamps rather than the silicone ones. So I thought this is a good chance to use some of these. I also like the fact that you can use wooden stamps without needing an acrylic plate. So that's one tool less you need to have. I've collected these over the years. I did not buy them at once. So I'm going to just pick a stamp and stamp it. So here we have a mushroom. This one is quite big. So I think for this one, I would only use half of it. I think I'm going to stamp everything in black, but of course you can stamp any color you like. Mm, that's quite faint. I'm not super happy with this. I'm going to try that again. Okay, that's much better. So we have this one. I think out of all of these, these two are my very favorite. They are so simple 
and so adorable. These are from the Sora Aksan Bento box, the Japanese stationery box that I have treated myself with. This is now maybe two and a half years, uh, two years ago or one and a half years ago. I will link that video for you below in case you have not seen that amazing unboxing yet. It is the most beautiful stationery box ever. I don't know if it's currently available. You will have to check that, but that's where this box and this box are from. And I love them two bits. So let's stamp these. And these are hand carved. I just wanna mention that. They're so adorable. I'm so in love with these. I'll show you a close up in a moment. Look at this. There's this really large mushroom image. I could maybe use the whole thing or I could also then tear it down. Some of these like the mushroom ones and this one and I think this one are from AliExpress when I was still ordering from AliExpress, which I don't do anymore. But the links no longer work because that's always the problem with AliExpress. These stores disappear or the products are no longer available. But this is beautiful. Then I also really like these. These just have the issue that, as you can see, the edge gets ink as well. A lot of people don't mind that, but I do. Yeah, that's perfect. Beautiful. These are also really cute. Do this one with the swallows. Let's see if it will work on this crinkly paper. It's probably not the best choice of paper for a stamp. <laughs> this is probably a better paper for a background paper, but actually it works. Okay, that's seven stamps. I think that's enough. With this size, it would actually be cute to fold this one in half. So you have the image on both sides. But I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to tear just a piece out. And since I want more natural tears, I'm not using my tearing ruler. I'm just going to tear these with my fingers. So I will do that for all of my stamps. I'll keep this image as a full image for now. I kind of like the idea of making a huge tab with that and I can always still tear it down further if I don't like it. And since I want these images to stand out on my tabs, I will ink around all of the edges. You know how I just said it's nice to use wooden stamps because then you know, don't need the acrylic block. Well, guess what? I'm going to use it now anyway, <laughs> because I just realized I want these to have a little bit, I want these to look a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to add my rusty hinge and salvaged patina to go with the rest of my ephemera. So we're going to do what I've done before and I should have done this before stamping. So I will try this first on one and see if that was gonna mess up my stamp, meaning that I won't see it as well. If you do this after the fact that you've stamped, please be sure that you have a permanent ink, otherwise you're going to ruin it now by adding some liquid to it. Which one should I test? I can always re-stamp it, of course. I'll just try it on this one. Maybe I'll do it just by dipping it in instead of smooshing the thing down. Okay, let's see what this will look like once it's dry. It looks like it could work. So this is dry and thankfully it works. The stamped image is still crisp, so that's cool. I'm going to do that for all of my stamps. Again, use watercolor if you don't have Distress Ink or Oxide. 
or anything water-based that you have that has some color. This is really fun. <laughs> We need some more, so I first have to dry this because I don't want to mess up my stamp pad. But generally, I would really advise to do this before you stamp. I think that's much better. Okay, so I will clean this again. Oh, I should have put it on a scrap piece of paper. I forgot now. So now we'll add the, what is it called? Salvaged patina. This is what they look like now when they're dry. I think they look very yummy. I'm happy I added those colors. And as you can see here, <laughs> I do want to add a little bit of gold. And just in case you're wondering what this gold on this palette is, this is a powder. I got this at the Flying Tiger, which is not an art store. It's a store for, I don't know, fun gimmicks. And they have a very, very small selection of arty supplies. And I just wanted to try this because I saw it and I thought, okay, because it was fairly cheap. I think this was like three euro and I'm so in love with it because it has such a nice deep copper tone and so I'm going to take my water brush because I think I want some more on here and I'll just dip that in here and automatically the powder of course sticks to it maybe you've seen me do this in the past I always had the problem that I scooped the powder out on my palette and then I sprayed it with water and of course the powder went everywhere so some of you had suggested in the comments below and thank you so much for that is to first spray the water on the palette and then to add the powder. Yes, that would make so much more sense. <laughs> Sometimes you just can't think of the simplest things. I don't know if there was a limited time when they had these. I haven't been to Flying Tiger in a while, so I, I really don't know, unfortunately. My first thought was just to edge these with the gold like I would usually do, but having this fine tip here on this brush just gave me the idea that I should try to just make some accents relating to the image that is here. So what I mean by that is, for example, I have these petals. So I could maybe just accent those. Like that just to try something a little bit different, just to give me the feeling that I can actually draw. <laughs> I'm just gonna go around the right side of each of these little images and maybe underline this script. Just tiny, tiny accents. So I will keep doing that. These, of course, would be awesome in any type of collage or embellishment. These would be so fun to just have on hand to use whenever you need them in a project. So now it's time to actually make the page tabs. So you see I have my beautiful box of scraps here and I'm thinking I also might use some of Andrea's beautiful fabric to go with the rest. And I think I want to start off with this big one here. And I want to add a piece of this gorgeous paper because I can just see this being phenomenal together. So I'm going to just tear out a piece that will go underneath this one. Oh, I'm in love. I will need to ink around this, but oh my goodness, this is so cool. It's kind of covering too much though, so maybe I want to add it more like this so that we see this beautiful gold, maybe a little bit less like that. Love that. And then let's see, maybe we can add some fabric. We'll see if that works. Let me put these to the side. Is there a fabric that would work with this combination? Hmm, how about this green? That's unusual, but 
interesting. This, of course, will always work. Oh, that's a hard one. I kind of want to try this because I haven't used this at all, and this is such an unusual combination. Yes, love how that just peeks out a little bit. Gorgeous. Should we add some of this as well? So I cut a piece out with this beautiful flower. I want some of that flower showing, of course. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna cut this even smaller just so that we just see the flower. And then maybe we'll just put the flower on top. Yes, that was it. That's what it needed. So there's our first tab. I do need to ink up the edges. I should probably do that once it's all together, but I just wanna see what it will look like now. Love, 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 love. I have not decided yet how I'm actually going to attach these. Maybe I'll just sew through it. I could glue it as well, of course. Let's see, I'll do that at the end all together. So I'll put this one aside. Let's do a tiny one. Let's do this one. I so love this paper, but I can't glue it. This one, the glue won't stick to this. It's, it's like a waxed paper, but if I sew it, then it will be fine. I think these are beautiful together. I can use a part of this where I had stamped the leaves with the acrylic paint. Yes. Very cute. And I also want some fabric underneath that. Maybe some of this one. I might have been using this on the wrong side, actually. <laughs> Very sweet. This one might need a sequin at the end. <laughs> Let's try the mushroom one. This one. I want to use some more of this. I'm so in love with this paper. <laughs> Sometimes really the best scraps are just from random, random paper that you have. I prefer this over a designer paper any day. I should have scanned it. Oh, that makes me sad now. I should have scanned it. Oh well, I'll have to make more. Corrugated cardboard. That is very bulky. Maybe we can take some of these layers off. Or maybe we can just tear it in half. <laughs> Even this is actually quite cool. I would have liked this, but this is so bulky because it's like double. You see that? There's two layers. If I can get one off, then we'd be good to go. But this is not too small, I think. Yeah. Unless I put it over this, but then no, 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 we can't do that. We need to see this beautiful paper. What if we use this one? Yeah, that would work. I like that. Does this need? Yes, it needs some fabric as well. How about some of this here? No, under the gold. Don't want to cover that up. Yep, that's number three. Next 
Let's try this one here. That's another big one. I don't think this pile is ever going to get smaller. <laughs> this this is a paper also from the Sora Aksan Bento stationery box I don't have many left of what was in the box which is kind of cool because I'm happy I used almost all of it but it has taken me a long time like I needed to hoard what was in that box for I think a year or something because it was just so beautiful now oh, this is cute what else oh yeah this is gorgeous this is part of my collage fodder that i made in a video we could have that just peeking out from under there gorgeous fabric oh this could be really cute together oh i still have this piece Andrea, in case you're watching this video, um, do you see how much I'm loving your fabrics that you sent me? And I love that I'm putting them to good use more or less immediately. I'm not hoarding them, I'm actually using them and that makes me so happy. Not sure if I want it over or under this vellum. Yeah, like this could work. Number four, three more. Let's do this bird one. Let me know in the comments below if you have a box of scraps or how you keep your scraps or do you keep scraps? No, I know you keep scraps. <laughs> I don't think a junk journaler exists that doesn't keep scraps. But how do you keep it? And do you think that the way you're keeping it works well for you? Share that with the rest of us because maybe there's some good ideas that we haven't thought of yet. I love this box system because I can really just rummage around in it. That's also a cute combination. I think this calls for either this one or that's maybe too much of the same. Maybe again this one or I also have this one. No, or this one. I like this one or maybe both who knows done this is number six some more leftover texture paste with some paint over it, some splatters over it. This is on packaging paper. Beautiful texture. I might just take a longer piece. We want to see some of this goodness. Paper is again from the Sorach San Bento box. It was packaging. Yep. Love it. Hmm, this might work. Mm-hmm. That gives it just a little accent of color. It's number six done. And lastly, we have this small piece. I want to add some more of this gorgeousness. Oh, I have another idea. I have these pieces here. So that's obviously corrugated cardboard. And this is some other kind of packaging. 
on which I have added first gesso, then my beloved Jade Green. I know it's blue, it's not green. <laughs> and then this gold on top just to have ready for collaging. And I think this is exactly what it needs. So instead of this plain corrugated cardboard, why don't we try some of this? Then let's add this piece underneath. Oh, wow. There we go. I love these pieces so much, but they are too big for my scrap box here because this is just for my like medium sized scraps. So I just tore a piece off of each to add here so that I have it when I need it for collaging. No. I've decided I'm going to assemble these by putting a through stitches through them with my sewing machine, but I don't want to just sew over the whole thing because I don't really want to sew over the images. I don't know, I'm just not feeling that, especially with these, they're so small. And if we would sew right through it, I don't think you would see them very well. With these and these, I don't think it would matter. So I'll just put a few stitches through each of these to just hold everything together. And you know, it'll be nice to see the stitches somewhere. And then I'll check if I need to, I will then glue some other some of the other bits together so i chose a turquoise thread for my sewing you probably know by now when you see this parchment paper <laughs> I'm feeling my splatter urge. <laughs> so black paint would look awesome, I think, on these, but I wanna try something new. I bought this tin in Istanbul, in Turkey, and it had soap in it. And I used it to put some single watercolors in it. Now I bought these locally. These are artist grade white nights, and they are super, super pigmented. So I think that's a great feature for splatters. And I want to use this beautiful deep turquoise i'll read you in a number just in case anyone wants to know one nine one one five seven so let's spray these or let's spray that one hoping not to get any on my laptop for once <laughs> Want to be gentle, don't want to go overboard. So what do we do with the rest that's on our brush? No, we don't dump it out. We of course add it to some scraps. I have some white yummy parchment paper. Imagine this with a little bit of gold, with a little bit of black, black splattering. It's going to be so yummy. Here you can see it, that it's turquoise. It's a very deep turquoise, and I think it's absolutely beautiful, especially with this kind of coral color. And I forgot to mention, I decided after sewing these, I, I'm not even gonna glue them. I mean, they're all attached to each other. I don't see the necessity to glue the pieces together. I do, however, see a necessity to add some bling. <laughs> I actually think these would go so well into a bohemian journal, wouldn't they? The colors are just absolutely bohemian in my eyes anyway. I have these, which of course are going to be beautiful on any collage. Maybe I can cut some of these threads down a little bit on the side, maybe here. How about up there? That could work. Then we have some of this glitter mesh. How about there? Which one did I say needed a sequin? I forgot. We could even try a turquoise one.
gold sequin. I don't think it gets more bohemian than this. <laughs> I have these tiny wooden birds. I've shown you these before. What if we add that to flower maybe? But it needs a different color. We can't really see it. So what do we do? Do we paint it? I already cleaned my brush. Oh, I know what to do. I'll take my salvage patina and try to just rub it. <laughs> Uh huh, it's working. Yep, turquoise bird. <laughs> so, where did I want this? Here, right? Oh, super cute. Now I feel like they all need something. <laughs> of course, again, once you start, you cannot stop. How about this vibrant yellow, gold yellow? Bling here. Okay, we have one more. What do we put on this one? I'm open for your suggestions. <laughs> no, we don't want to put another bird because there's a bird on here. What are you saying? I don't have an orange sequin. I'm sorry. Can add another turquoise one. Yes, I like it. Or should we add two? So I have a lighter turquoise as well, more like a minty one. Yep, this one gets two. And I will use art glitter glue for everything except for this one. I know it does not stick with art glitter glue. So for that one, I'm using my textile glue because I know that works. So here's our finished page tabs using stamps. I am so pleased how they came out. And now the best part, let's see what they look like in a journal. Once again, this is Honey's adorable journal. And I have to admit, I briefly considered whether I should just make this into my Urban Nature junk journal because everything that I've made fits in here so beautifully, both size-wise and the colors and because Honey's pages are just so yummy and everything just goes together so well. But I have two issues with that. And first of all, I have my big playing card with the bird on it that I wanted to put on the cover, which is actually the reason for my theme. And there is no way I can put anything on this beautiful cover. So that doesn't work. And the second thing is, and I, and I would have considered maybe then not putting that on the cover, but to put it in the journal, maybe on the first page somehow. But problem is also that this would get so bulky and I don't know that I would like that with this particular journal. I kind of like it like this that it's not a gator mouth, it would really become like huge. And I know many of you love that, but I, I don't know. I think it might be too much for this type of journal with this type of cover. Although Honey made it specifically so that it can grow. You know, this, this flap is definitely big enough, so it can definitely grow. But I just don't know. I just don't know. Maybe I'll just have to make my own journal. But I can't get over the fact that how perfect <laughs> this journal is for what I've been making. Maybe subconsciously. Let's see how this would look. So, oh my goodness. Need I say more? It's absolutely stunning. Let's try another one.
doesn't matter where you put them they're just gorgeous anywhere because of how gorgeous honey's journal is so again honey's instagram is linked below it's just amazing i, I don't know what to say and this is the last one I'm thinking I didn't make enough because I love these so much. I think I need more of these. <laughs> That's your inspiration for today. Let's go see what Louise has made a little later today. And let's see what the others in the playlist have done. I'm super curious what everyone is coming up with. Thank you so much for being here and for sharing my passion. And I hope to see you back here tomorrow. Shall we have a peek at what, it, what we have tomorrow? 20th frost flower and number or sentiment oh dear oh dear how on earth are we going to make a frost flower i guess we'll just have to find out tomorrow together <laughs> love you guys Mwah, mwah, 